Hello and welcome to Extra Time with me, Gary James, and owner of Prepared PR, Lisa Smith. And this is a sports-related show. Now, it means that we can invite as guests people who work or are connected to sport, but aren't necessarily always sportsmen or women. Uh, so we can give you a glimpse of what goes on behind the scenes. And our guest today is one of those people. Please welcome celebrity hair designer Daniel Johnson. Daniel, welcome. Thank you for, uh, for coming on Extra Time. Thanks, Andy. Brilliant. Um, before we get into the people's hair, mainly the footballers' hairs that, that you cut, yep. um, you started cutting hair at the age of 12. <clears throat> Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, I started cutting at the age of, of 12 for a reason, because um, when I was that young, I, I wanted a certain look. And I found that when I was going to uh, a few barber shops, they couldn't actually do the style. So that's when I decided I've had enough. I'm going to go and get some clippers. And I actually started, I started cutting my own hair. And then um, I started doing friends and family. And then slowly, slowly, the word started getting out. And my mum's household became a shop. And she wasn't too happy about that. But um, I said, Mum, yeah, I've got this. And uh, it went from family and friends to me actually taking my garden chair, the bathroom mirror, and having a barber shop at the age of 16. Right. So I didn't really, I went straight from school to a businessman. Yeah. And um, from the age of 16, <coughs> um, I built up a, a reputation in my area and it started going outside of my area. And I started attracting uh, championship players from the from age of 16. And um, most of my hair designs were sort of very unique. It had a, um, a Daniel Johnson signature look, and that look it kept my, it kept all clients coming back mm. for repeat cuts. So after a while, I found that I started getting these odd text messages: "Dan, can you come to the hotel?" So after a long day's graft, I'm thinking that's a bit strong. Like, I've just done eight hours graft, but now straight from work, I was going to a hotel, and then it went from one hotel to another hotel. And this was players? Yeah, to go. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what I found was most of my clients were coming back and they were saying to me, I scored a goal last night. I'm like, no way, like, Dan, that cut you gave me, wow, it was just, <laughs> it was crazy, you know? So um, it's, I started getting the recognition not just from the players, but they was getting the feedback. And for me, it's about making my clients look like they're on a red carpet. Yeah. So, as you know, uh, players, when they walk out on the field, what do they do? Represent their badge. So I started to see there was a pattern where if a player didn't have a cut, they didn't feel like they wanted to play. And for me, I had to put my whole energy into a Pacific style and make them feel uh, almost like they're wearing a crown on the field because a lot of football teams it's, it's sort of boots a uniform and you're not allowed to do things so hair's the only option for them so then it becomes a style on the pitch yeah. and it's like players are actually battling who's got the best hairdo for that game so <laughs> it was back and forth uh, back and forth and uh, in between me doing that um, behind the scenes, I end up having from one uh, from one shop into four shops, and this shop actually started with eighty six pound to my name. I actually um, I signed the contract with no money. I was yeah. sixteen years old. I had Tony and Guy beside me. I had other barbers on the other side. I was a young kid with a massive shop, no shop sign, no barber chair, <laughs> no nothing, gotcha. and it went from it went from me having that to actually having a brand of four shops travelling up and down the country and in demand. Mm. So, naturally, some of my players went to the Premier League and that's where it's, it's now going from a crowd of a few thousand to, you know, millions of fans around the world yeah. tuning in, watching games. So now I'm thinking, wow, I'm seeing my haircuts on front page magazines, I've done things for uh, GQ, Esquire, um, and the National Press. Yeah. Um, and you were you were a, 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 um, sort of a, a stylist or sort of a consultant to Levita, yeah. weren't you? S sorry. When you were you were a stylist yes, yes, or yes. to Levita? Yeah. Um, that come across with just me. Just um, I say, here's a lifestyle. 
And it's the old accessory, which is fact. Who's going to go to a wedding and not do their hair? Male or female? Yeah. No one. So, because my name started building uh, around the press, so forth and so forth, I started attracting attention from magazines, and the video was one of them. And um, so far, it's going really, really well. Mm. And um, I've got my own little section in there, and I'm just giving tips of um, n not just men's grooming, but on um, style, how to dress, how to look good on a yeah. night out. Come on, then. Field. <laughs> what do you reckon? Your swag right now. <laughs> I'm, cool. I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> the brown shoes, the slim jeans, and the blazer. I actually like that look. It's, good. it's, it's spot on. It's spot on. <laughs> it's Lisa, come on. <laughs> 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 oh dear, brilliant. He's like an but, old man, very Oh, how could you mean an old man, very <laughs> <laughs> 39, 39. <laughs> uh, and, and it's amazing because from, from you starting at 12, all self, yeah. basically self taught. I'm self taught, I haven't gone to college, no one showed me how to do anything. I was just in the bedroom on my own from a young age. And I think what, is, uh, what actually inspired me was that uh, having my shops. And I had young guys coming to me. They all cut the same. Yeah. So that tells me there's something wrong in the hair industry because if everyone's cutting the same, who's unique? Mm. So when they come to me, I said, listen, I know you've been in college, you trained here and there, but it needs to be magazine sharp. There's a difference between a five pound haircut and a haircut that costs whatever the price tag is, yeah. because obviously there's more effort put into it. And the fact that um, where I'm doing people in the public eye, when they're getting snapped in the press and they're in magazines, that's my work. So if I've done a bad job yesterday, that's the end of my career, just like that, because yeah. it's, it's, it's such a small world. You're as good as your last haircut. Exactly. It's just like a player scoring goals. If no one ain't scored in six months, no one's interested, yeah. regardless who you are. So, you know, it's the same as... Um, it's the same as in my field. So there is slight pressure because I know as soon as I do a haircut and they walk out in front of millions of fans all around the world, I mean, sometimes on my social media, it goes mad. You're yeah. this, you're that. If no one don't score, I'll give you an example. Some of my players that don't cut, this is facts, that don't have a haircut and they go to a game, I don't know why, they do not score. <laughs> when they have a haircut, they go out, their whole attitude is different, and they yeah. bang goals because that's what happens. So, again, it's a uniform. It goes with the football kit, and it's part of their... Um, I say a haircut is a massive part of your confidence. I mean, like, if we sit in the room now and there's five guys, say Force had a haircut, you'll find them guys at the bar, yeah, mate, all right, da-da-da. But the one who hasn't, you'll slowly see that his confidence is a bit... It's yeah. not... Yeah, because he's thinking... That guy there, his chest is out, his shirt's on, it's all slim fit, it's all razor sharp around here, but my hair's a bit... He goes a bit quiet, he's in the corner. And I see these things, and I think that in men's grooming now, I'm, I'm quite happy that guys are shaping up their eyebrows, having a sun bed, take, like, taking extra care, um, manicure, pedicure as yeah. well, because women have done it for years, and they're, and, they're, and they're praised for it. And years ago, a guy would never dream of having a shaped up eyebrow. The, the banter he would get, <laughs> oh my. Imagine that, like you've got a top guy with shaped yeah. up eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, they're going to yeah, kill him. Yeah, you wouldn't have said that. change them, it's on. They're, they're hammering you. But now, oh, who's done your eyebrows? Oh, sick, sick, sick. I have to go there. Yeah. Fake yeah. tan. It's, it's all part of the way forward. Mm. So for me, I'm glad to see that. Because and, and, and Lisa, obviously, you work with, with a lot of the players in the world yeah. of real PR. Is that something that you talk to, to the players about if they're looking a bit, a bit scruffy and that? Would you suggest like you know going to to Jan, oh, Daniel to recommend him? But um, yeah, I don't think I could probably comment too much. To be fair, most of them, um, as you say, I think it, it's partly an image thing. They're in the public eye, they're yeah. on TV, so they want to look good. But also, um, I know a lot of players who will probably talk later in the show yeah. about their superstitions. And you know, I was talking to players last night, and they were talking about they put the left boot on before the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they all yeah. have certain styles yeah. about what they wear and touching the chest and room wall and all these stuff <laughs> things. Yeah. And yeah. hair, a lot of them have told me hair is a big part of that. It's, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. And also. Um, what goes in the in the wash bag is important because it's hair again. I, yeah. I mean, look when Ronaldo had done that. It was a, I wouldn't even say it was a cheeky move, but he walked out 
one way. He went in, changed them, and all he done was all he literally done. He flicked it up, and it was pressed the next day. Ah, oh, he changed his hair twice in a game. <laughs> He just moved his hair from one side to the next, but it goes to show you, again, yeah. it's, a, it's an the image. Watching. The whole world's watching. watching. Every mm. single yeah. move. And the young lads like, like to copy, don't they? I know yeah. that. Um, well, um, we're coming up to the end of uh, the first half. We're off yeah. to discuss uh, where we're going on our holidays this year. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll be back uh, talking more uh, about hair-raising stories um, very soon. And if you'd like to get in touch with the show, then please email extratime at bigcentre.tv. But for now... It's half time and extra time. So welcome back. This is Extra Time with celebrity hair designer Daniel Johnson, PR guru Lisa Smith and me, Gary James. Uh, so, um, Daniel, you are the hair designer to the celebs, mainly footballers. Yeah. Um, so some of, who are the, some of the players, some of the heads that, um, that you've designed? Yeah, I mean, um, for the Euros, I got flown out 2012. Absolutely amazing. Um, a touchdown. As you can imagine, there was just fans everywhere. Uh, got to the hotel. And um, I went to one of the rooms and I literally had I'd, I'd done the whole squad back to back. In, out, in, out, John Terry, Rooney, the whole squad. And um, I was very happy because I saw goals and th those goals were created with, with my magical hands, as they call me, as a, <laughs> uh, behind the scenes. But, but, yeah. but Rooney, he's, he's got this, he's had something done, hasn't he? I don't know what you call it, but. With Waza, I feel. It's an enhancement for him. It makes him look 10 times better. And again, as I always say, um, hair is the ultimate accessory and it's confidence. The last thing any man wants is having um, any issues, whether it's hair or mm. uh, growing a beard is another one as well. Some lads that can't grow a beard, the banter. Because that's a big thing at the moment, isn't it? Beard. Beards are massive. Yeah. I, have, I have boys saying, ah, oh, can't you get me no like special oil, bruv? I'm like, <laughs> no oil can make you grow grow a beard like that. You know, it's all if it's there, it's there. So sometimes I'm scraping the skin with nothing there. But yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I've done the Euros. I've done the most of the squad. big games. To be yeah. fair, um, I look after Rooney, uh, Balotelli, Gareth Bale uh, when he signed. That was a, a major thing for me. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the day before it was in Real Madrid as the most as the most expensive player in the world. Now, I have to always say this. Before I got my hands on him, the transformation is just amazing. And for me, it's about seeing my clients enhance themselves, confidence, how they look, head to toe. And for me, Gareth Bale went from here to up here. I mean, he went from just being a player to a fashion icon within months, in stages. It did take me a long time to shave the side. I said, G, listen to me. I called him G. I said, G, listen, the sides have to come down and I'm going to give you a centre part and a sweep. Uh, when he signed for Real Madrid, it actually created over 1.6 million new jobs for barbers and hairstylists. Wow. And that hairstyle was trending worldwide for at least three months. And I'm, I'm very happy that I had done that. You started that. And up. even now, that haircut is still going forward. And I say that, um, I see people posting pictures all the time of different hairstyles and I've done this a long time ago and it is, it's still trending now and that makes me feel good inside that I'm doing, it's part of me giving back. So it, I feel that what I do for the players on the pitch, it actually trends. Um, Balotelli's... Sorry, sorry, how did you get the inspiration though to come up with the hair? Um, the my inspiration is coming from life and my surroundings. Um, I find that if I'm in a creative mood, I'll just end up creating. Mm. Um, so Balotelli would let, let you do some crazy things, whereas others perhaps would be more. Yeah, uh, Balotelli, obviously we know that he's a, a big, he's a very big character. Yeah. And um, that hairstyle suits him really, really well. And I find that most of the styles that I do actually match their characters. Mm. So, i.e., I couldn't give Bale a blonde mohawk shaved sides. <laughs> <laughs> and, at, and at the same time, I can't give um, Mario a sweep over. No, he no. yeah, so, I mean, each, uh, each player that I do has got their own style, but mm. um, I love what I do, and I love creating new trends. Mm. I say new because there's a lot of people out there trying to call things new. It's not new. 
I've done most of the styles. And um, for me, I've got a lot for the summer coming. I can't say too much, but there's going to be a very special haircut that's going to hit every yeah. magazine in the world. Mm -hmm. Fact. Wow. And that's going to be very exciting. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Who do you particularly like doing? Who are the characters that you work with? Me, um, one of my boys is Jermaine Defoe. He's got great banter. I love working with that guy because some of the guys are quite serious, you know? Yeah. But they've all got, uh, they're all really nice people. But there's always like, there's a few that are like, not the jokers, but we have like strong banter, you know? So like, um, yeah, Gareth Bale, Jermaine Defoe, Ashley Young, top guy as well. Yeah. Bash, yeah. Um, and you do a lot of hair for our players in the Midlands, don't you, from yeah. the West Farm? I've worked with um, Andy Wyman, he's another great guy. Yeah. Darren Bent, great guy again. He needs to, I would love to see him playing a lot more because he's an underestimated player. Mm. Yeah. And he's, a, he's such a great talent just well, sitting he's, there. He's doing well, at, OK, he's got to Derby, Derby hasn't he, on loan yeah. at the moment. So I'm he's not scoring too goals. Bad, you know? mm. Darren, keep doing your thing. Like, yeah. I'm really proud of Darren. Like, he's slowly getting back. Um, mm. I worked with Gabby before. Yeah. Banter. <laughs> I do like Gabby as well. Um, Tom Cleverly, he's another one. I really like Tom as well. He's yeah. cool, man. He's down yeah. to earth. And you, you used to do, what well, you probably still do, um, Ravel Morrison's. Yeah. Because Ravel was, he was up here at Birmingham City for a while. Yeah. Before, yeah, he, yeah, went, yeah. before he was called back. I first met him when he, when he got picked for England. So I was actually working in a hotel room and then um, he walked in. He's like, yeah, yeah, I want a trim. I said, come, man. He sat down and that. That same haircut I gave him, it was in the press the next day, mm. straight away. And he, and he scored a fantastic goal. Again, yeah. hands. So, yeah, yeah um, it was good seeing it as well, you know. Yeah. So it seems that a lot of the players, like Ashley Young at the moment yeah. and a few others, they've all got the style like, like you've got your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm growing mine from the back at the moment, so it's, you know, <laughs> it hasn't quite got there yet. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but is, is, that, is that been the, the sort of shaved look, been the um, thing for a while? Or? There's a... Uh, a few different looks. I mean, there's a shave look like mine, um, then we've got the, the mohawk, and then we've got the sweep over. At the moment, um, I'm not sure if you saw uh, Eric Lamella's goal, but I gave him a new haircut. And as soon as he started playing, that same day, the goal he scored was just unreal. Again, I was in the press the next day, Eric Lamella, crazy goal. It was, you know, there's him, uh, Saldado as well. A lot of the boys are having these, they're actually starting to let me just do what I want to do because I say to them that I have I have a visual that no one else can't see and my talent is tra transformation so if I can see something in somebody to enhance them mm. I genuinely try and not push them I mention it if they want it I'll go ahead if they say now nah, Dan slow it down and then I'll slowly start transforming them and then when they start getting attention because it, it happens you start looking a bit more handsome, a lot of things happen. So, yeah. again, you know, I'm there. And they're called a style maker now, a magic hand. So I've got two different kind of... Uh, and, and, and as we know, the, the world of football, it, it's, it's, a, it's a closed family, isn't it? Very yeah. close family. Yeah. And once you're in yeah. and the recommendation's coming, then, yeah. then it's fantastic as long as they yeah. trust you yeah. and you do a good job, which obviously you, you, yeah. you do. But so is most of your time then spent driving up and down motorways and jumping on and off planes? It's all around the world, you know. Um, I've got clients out in Dubai as well. Um, I get flown out there. And you mentioned bids. Mm. I've actually uh, had a phone call from one of the... Um, he's a young prince in, in Dubai. And he goes, I want haircuts. So I was like, all right, cool. I, I got to the airport, business class, jumped on a plane, landed. A white roller grabbed me, gone to the hotel. I was like, right, OK. I pulled out my scissors and the machines and stuff. And he goes, no, 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 uh, just my bid. So he flew me out literally just to give him a trim on the bid. And I was sitting there thinking, <laughs> I thought I coming for a haircut. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> but I do get some crazy stuff. Like, can you fly over? I just want to shape up. I'm actually flying abroad just to shape somebody up or just trim their beard. So it's from anywhere in the world. Basically, yeah. it's all from Milan, haven't you? Yeah, um, I've just come back from Milan. I've just launched a, a new salon spa out in, in uh, central Milan. Yeah. I've just launched my new hair products as well, which is for all hair types. And um, what I was finding, again, going back to the lads in their wash bags, I said, oh, what do you use? And they're showing me. And they're like, ah, oh, bruv, it's not. I ain't doing it. Like, <laughs> I'm going out on the pitch and it's up one minute, then it's dropping, and then on half time, I'm in the middle, like, what's all that? <laughs> you know? So everyone was moaning. And then I thought, okay, I see a gap in the market here. 
So it's taken me a good few, like six, seven months to actually start going out, not just finding a company and stamping yeah. Daniel Johnson on it, which no disrespect to some people, but they, they do. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. I've got, I've got a team with me. We've gone out, we've handpicked these ingredients. We've trialed and tested them on my clients. The feedback's been absolutely amazing and it's available now online. Right. And it's called Daniel Johnson? It's called Very Well by Daniel Johnson. Okay, and then get that yeah. on, online. Yeah. So if you just Google Daniel Johnson, then you... It's up, yeah. Um, okay. Well, you and and are you going to move, do you think you'll be moving into more <laughs> men's grooming, like the moisturisers and, and shaving foam? We're actually working on a beard oil at the moment. Going back to the beard, it's the big thing. So we're just putting the formulas together at the moment for the beard oil. And um, that's another way forward. But we're actually selling around seven, eight different countries. So, yeah. All good. Oh, well. And who's the one person you haven't managed to get yet that, whose hair you'd love to cut? Um, it would either, I'd, I'd have to say, it, it, would either, it would have to be either Neymar or Ronaldo, to be fair. Because yeah. I see a lot of, um, I can enhance how they look. I'm not going to mm. speak about well, other people's work, but the enhancement I can definitely do. It's, no problem. Well, Daniel, from, from a lad that um, started off cutting hair at 12 to where you are now, yeah. in incredibly well. Congratulations. Thank and I hope it keeps going for you. Thank you. Um, as the final whistle about, is about to approach, many thanks then to Lisa Smith and, of course, to Daniel Johnson. And if you'd like to contact us uh, for anything to do with the show, it's extra time at bigcentre.tv. That's it for now. Bye-bye.